adventures. Today I'm going to be touching on a topic that came up in one of our past videos and I wanted to talk about it a little bit more and that's banned books. So according to the American Library Association, a banned book would be defined as a book that was removed from a school or library. Pretty straightforward explanation. Most people have probably heard of a banned book but I just wanted to clarify exactly what I was referring to when I'm talking about this. Why are books challenged or banned? Why, why, why does this even come up? It's a question that I've thought about before and I've actually talked about it quite a bit. It's come up in more than one conversation with many different people and it's really an interesting thing to discuss and hear different people's opinions about. Typically the argument held for people wanting to ban books is that they're wanting to protect typically children, but just people in general from specific really difficult or challenging ideas or topics, which, you know, so that seems understandable. It seems straightforward. There's some nasty things in this world. You can, you can kind of understand that. So why is it bad? Why is there such this resistance against banning books if, at face value, protecting innocence doesn't seem like such a bad idea? Well, it's one that it's a question, why is banning books bad, is one that doesn't always stick around for long because most people can see, if they actually try and look for it, why it's bad. Banning books goes directly against freedom of, sp freedom of speech and freedom of expression. So I live in the United States and the First Amendment of our US Constitution states, and I'm gonna read this directly. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Um, we have a lot of protection because of the First Amendment in the U.S. in the sense that we don't struggle as much with banned books. Because we have um, this, this amendment in place, doesn't mean there's things that violated our constitu Constitution, and specifically this that have happened in the U.S. history at all, but um, that's typically what we're going for and we do have a level of protection as long as those in power respect the Constitution. So banning books is bad because it prohibits freedom of expression and it prohibits the ability to receive information that you can think critically about. But there are some books out there that are just bad, right? Like that's something most people would agree on. There's Maybe you can think of one, a book that you just think is a bad book with bad content that shouldn't be allowed f for anybody to read, young young or old, but specifically children, okay? This mentioned in the definition, the American Library Association specifically mentioned taking it off of the shelf of a school, okay? So put it in that context, you're thinking children, school library, maybe even college, that, that would make sense, right? Although college age, people are exposed to a whole lot more than just even middle school, elementary school, and high school, grade schools. But here's the thing, while we would agree, while maybe we've come to this conclusion that there are some books out there that are just flat out bad, they do destroy innocence. But the thing is, there's people on the other side that would say books that maybe I consider really thought-provoking or challenging and I think have a really strong message, they would say that they should be banned because they're bad. That's this whole problem we have here, is that bad is a subjective term. And so if I say, okay, banning bad books is okay, it's never going to end, because on the other side of the argument, there's going to be people saying, yeah, banning bad books is okay, they're going to be banning books I think are good, and I'm going to be banning books they think are bad. Bad is this subjective term, and until the world adapts and adheres to a standardized basis of good and bad, and 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 until, unless there was a time where everyone decided, okay, this is my standard, this is what I'm going to live by. Unless they come to that conclusion, there's no way that we can have a non-subjective and unbiased opinion of banned books. It's just not going to work. And if we lived in a world where everyone had the same basis of truth and there was a solid objective truth that people adhered and lived by, we wouldn't have to deal with this issue of banning books in the first place. So it would be completely irrelevant. But that's not the world we live in. We live in a, I heard it put really well the other day, a fatally flawed world. And then lastly, which I kind of mentioned in a previous video, is censoring speech is a way to try and manipulate people and how they think. You're manipulating someone who's trying to censor information, is trying to prohibit 
the information people get so that they can process that and make their own decisions based on it for someone's specific agenda. If there's someone in power who wants people to believe something, maybe they want them to do this thing or not do this thing, they're going to feed them information that propels them towards that and they're going to try and eradicate information that pushes someone away from that. And that's why we have this um, First Amendment in the Constitution, Constitution of the United States is to help protect against this from people who came from places where they were censored, not always in, they were censored in their speech, and they were censored in what they could believe, and that's the whole basis of America and why, how America became established as a type of nation it is today, or at least was when the Founding Fathers established it. Um, there's a lot of places where you can see this in observation, communism and socialist countries or regimes you can look back on and study this type of thing, how propaganda really worked. Um, and if you haven't already, I would suggest you take a look at that because it's really, really very interesting. So there's a whole handful of books on the banned book list and I have not read nearly close to all of them, but I wanted to talk about just the three that I do own and that are on my bookshelf. So I have To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, I have 1984 by George Orwell, and I also have Animal Farm by George Orwell. Just three books here. Um, all of these I would recommend to an extremely large audience. If you're wanting to preserve your innocence, maybe find out what's in the book before you jump into that. Find scenes you can skip or choose not to read that specific book. Perfectly understandable. Animal Farm is something I would recommend just, just pretty much to anyone. And honestly, To Kill a Mockingbird as well, although it's been a good minute since I've read that. These are really excellent stories, very thought-provoking stories. And I don't understand why you would want a book that wouldn't make you stop and think, or want some books at least, that would make you stop and think. Um, so that's my reasoning for liking these. I do appreciate what they're showing. 1984 was one of the most thought-provoking books I've read in a really long time. These are the type of books that are on the banned book list. I don't see any way how restricting the reading of these or banning these books from schools or children would help them at all. I don't see how eliminating these from people's ability, taking these away so people can't read these anymore would make things better. It would not. It would make things worse unless you're trying to push a specific agenda and control people in a specific way. Um, if, if it's the situation where children and innocence, that doesn't mean they should be banned at all. The other books I've read that are on the banned book list would be Call of the Wild by um, Jack London. And then I actually haven't read this, but I thought it'd be interesting because I know a lot of you guys are book lovers out there. And The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien is also on the banned book list. So those are the things I wanted to mention for you all. Talk a little bit about banned books, my opinion on them, why it's how, how it works to try and ban books and then mention a few of, that I've read and if you would like specific information about any of these if I haven't already talked about them and you're interested in reading them please feel free to ask me down in the comments below I'd love to give you some feedback more detailed feedback about each of the stories thank you guys so much for watching in Day Adventure please like this video and comment down below once again with your thoughts stay warm